Hi guys, welcome back. We're at uh, Loch Mora, up in the uh, highlands of Scotland, and we're on um, a bit of a, a mycology mission, you could say, looking for the uh, different varieties of mushrooms that are around here. The edible, inedible, uh, and that's if we see any. We're here for a good walk around, taking the vista, taking the view, and enjoy wild Scotland. Stick with us. And uh, i just got to watch one footing as we come around this beautiful little secluded area. Ah, oh, that's not too bad. That's not too shabby, is it? Check that out for uh, crystal clear. The sulfur tuft, Hypoloma fasciculare, also known as the wood lover, is a common mushroom found in most of the UK. On its smooth surface, the hemispherical cap appears sulfur yellow with an orange brown centre and white margin. The taste is very bitter, though not bitter when cooked, but still this should be avoided as it is poisonous. Lockmore R is the deepest freshwater body in the British Isles, with a maximum depth of 310 metres. The lock is surrounded by a mixture of coniferous and broadleaf woodlands. Its fish population is believed to be limited to arctic salmon, brown trout, sea trout, stickleback, arctic char, minnow and some eels, although they haven't been seen in recent years. The river Morar flows from the lock at the west end. At a few hundred metres long, it's one of the shortest rivers in the British Isles. And if you look close enough, in common with Loch Ness and the monster, occasional reports of large unidentified creatures are made. The monster is named Morag. These are the magic mushrooms, I think. This one's about two, three inches. Kind of cool shape, as you can see. Brown, slightly mottled, black edges. Almost like it's been scorched. As you can see, the gills, they're black as well. Not edible. Not unless you want to go uh, back to the 60s. From this angle, the olive brittle gill looks remarkably like the eye-catching Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric mushroom. But as you can see from this specimen, the stipe has a ring and vulva, where the brittle gill has none. Also, the fly agaric is covered with numerous small white to yellow pyramid shaped warts. This is one of its distinct features. Although something to be wary of, the rain has been known to wash the pyramids off and change the coloration of the cap as well. So this is something to consider before harvesting any mushroom, how the weather and the environment has impacted on the appearance of the fungi. The brittlehead's cap is yellow or olive when young and then it develops into a, a rusty brown colour. The stem is pale pink with white flesh on the inside and is without smell and has a mild taste. And unlike the fly agaric, is a definite edible. seen a fair few of these. I wonder what these are. Oh. No, they're not, are they? The elusive chanterelle. Wild meat, let's eat. Go on, give us your insight, my friend. Tell me whether this is edible or, I mean, that's quite buggy, actually. You can see the bugs in there. In fact, it's infestated infestated with bugs but uh so we won't be eating that or taking it with us but um what is it is it edible or would it have been edible here we have a couple of examples of lacinum scabrum 
otherwise known as the rough stemmed belletti, scaber stalk or birch belletti. It fruits during June to October and is pretty much widespread all over Europe. As you could see with the first example, the cap of the mushroom was quite slimy when wet, but usually the skin of the caps a light grey brown or reddish grey colour, dry but rather slimy when wet. As it ages the uh, flesh is more grey than white and it doesn't change colour when broken. This is a definite edible and as you cook it the flesh will go from white to black. It's often harvested in Finland and pickled in brine or vinegar. I find it especially scrumptious cooked with a large steak. I've also gathered some chanterelle. These are quite distinct in colour as you can see. You can find these in white or yellow. The common ones are usually orange. They have a gill-like ridge that runs almost all the way down to the stipe. They usually have an odour like apricot and a peppery taste. Or as my German friend Michael would say, Pfeffer. Hence its German name, Pfefferling. What I'd like to do for you now is to cook up some of the chanterelle. Mix that with some yellow pepper, spring onion and some chorizo. I'll just cut these peppers. A nice compliment for the uh, chanterelles and the uh, birch bolettis. Stronger near the end of the green onion, spring onion. So here we have the chanterelles. I'll slice them in the middle there, so they're not. I know they're not buggy. You can see how the the chanterelle there goes from the very top all the way down. It's not quite gilled, but uh, these are sort of like ribs. Um, nice and pure in the centre. Nicely prepared, so what I'll do now is I'll just place that on top of the wood burner. Stump that up, get that on the uh, So guys, that's how you cook chanterelle mushrooms. Beautiful with uh, the chorizo, spring onions and peppers. Nutritious, all nicely put together in a beautiful herb wrap. Bon appetit.
like pankosh. They're not pankosh.